morning, everyone. Please stand. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. For the Lord is a shield and sun. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let us pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we come to you this day, O God. Though our hearts may be saddened, O God, we, we know that we have a Heavenly Father whom we can put our trust in, O God. Father, your word says weeping may endure for a night, but we know joy cometh in the morning. Father, I pray to the, for today's, I prefer today's proceedings, O God. I pray that you're going to have your way, O God. And even though we are here to remember the life of our sister, I pray, O God, the word that will go forth will touch a life, O God, and that someone that is here will hear from you today. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As as we remain standing, I greet everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon and coming King. I want to recognize the family that is here of our sister Douglas. Also, I want to recognize our minister Conan. To all our members and friends, a pleasant good morning. As we do the congregational hymn. Amazing Grace. And you can find it in your program as, as well as your phone.
God. What amazing grace. What amazing love. Amen. How sweet the song. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the ministry of the word. And we'll be reading from the New Testament, Romans 8, 31 to verse 38. And we'll have Veronica Douglas who is going to come. I believe that's the daughter of our sister Douglas. Good morning, everybody. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. It is he who condemneth. It is Christ that died, yea, raith, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for his words. And we're going to have the second scripture reading from the Old Testament, and while we're going to ask uh, Sharon Allen to come and do second scripture reading, it's be, it will be taken from Job 19, 20 to 26. Good morning, church. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? O that my words were now written, O that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with the iron pen and laid in the rock forever. For I, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as our worship team prepared to come, I want to recognize our Parliament Secretary, Honorable Veronica Dorset. Also, uh, I want to recognize our uh, Pastor Tony Allen. And we do have a bishop among us, uh, Bishop Philip Webb, out of St. Kitts. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some sweet day I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world no more to roam. Hallelujah. Some sweet day when life is over. Praise some the Lord. sweet day I'm going away. Oh, 
going away. I'm gonna leave this world. Don't want to go. Some sweet day when life is over. Some sweet day I'm going away. Some sweet day we are going away. Little Moses in the bulrush. Oh, 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 by and by, the oh Lord will surely let us sleep there at the meeting. There is going to be a meeting there in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet you, meet you there in that old
as we reflect upon the life of our dearly beloved sister Douglas. Amen. At this time we're going to have a tribute from our sister Weeks, sister Mary Weeks. Or sister Eugene. A eulogy, oh, we're going to have the eulogy now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. My apologies. Yeah. So we're going to have the eulogy now by Sister Lorraine Fenton. As Sister Fenton, come. everyone. Be before I read the eulogy, permit me just to pay my own little tribute and to give God thanks for the influence and the impact of Sister Mary on my life in the very early years. Um, her mother, Anne, and my mother were best friends. So Anne was my godmother. And my mother arrived from Curaçao in 1951 with three little heads one year apart. And I think that that may be where your mom got her caring for people ability. Those skills might have been developed. Caring for myself as number one, my brother Wingrove as number two, and my sister Nelva as number three. So I really give God thanks for her for being a part of my very early life. And now, the eulogy. Mary Christiana Gibbons Douglas, affectionately known as Mon Thompson, was born in Baker Hill, Montserrat, on February the 9th, 1941, to Anne Gibbons of blessed memory and police officer Thompson, also of blessed memory. In 1967, Mary married Robert Douglas of blessed memory and together they had three children, Cush, who's here, Sharon, and Veronica, who's also here. Mary received her early education at the Kabbalah Hill Primary School. At the tender age of 16 years, Mary left Montserrat for the UK in the hope of finding gainful employment, as did all of her compatriots of the Windrush generation. Upon arrival in the UK, 
She resided with her uncle Harry Gibbons and his family. Her mother and Gibbons joined her during that specific time in history to qualify for the label, the Windrush Generation, and we hear a lot of that in the news these days. Upon arrival in the UK, Mary's strongest desire and passion was to pursue studies and eventually spend a lifetime of service in the field of nursing. But she heeded the advice of her Uncle Harry to find a job as soon as possible. Therefore, the need to earn her own money became the driving force behind her decision to walk into a job as a machinist and to select that option. Mary and her mother Anne worked in an assortment of factories over the years because such jobs were readily available. Mary also found employment in the clothes industry with a small family business who came the family who came to love her as one of their own. But redundancy came knocking at the door, and she was laid off. The late President John F. Kennedy once said, the Chinese used two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One brush stroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. In a crisis, he continued, be aware of the danger but recognize the opportunity. In accordance with JFK's option, instead of seeing crisis when she was laid off, she recognized the opportunity and used it to begin caring for senior citizens. So even though her desire and passion for nursing never materialized, caring for the elderly was the closest that she could come without training. Therefore, caring for senior citizens allowed her to accomplish her heart's desire, to be in a field where she could care for people, a field in which she excelled. Upon retirement, Mary returned to her beloved homeland of Montserrat, choosing to spend as much time as her health and reason would allow, because all of her children were adults. She chose to use her time in Montserrat to engage in backyard gardening, planting an assortment of fruit trees, ground provisions, and flowers. She thoroughly enjoyed gardening. But after spending weeks or even months in Montserrat, as soon as she returned to London, she would begin plan planning her next visit to Montserrat. During Mary's illness, she was blessed with having friends who stepped in to assist with her care. Special mention must be made of her children the Church of God of Prophecy family here in Montserrat, and the New Life Assembly in London, Betty Lynch, all of whom she regarded with nothing but the highest form of affection. Mary enjoyed travel, and the Greek islands proved to be one of her favorite resorts for rest and relaxation, to the extent that she even began to learn the language. She leaves to mourn her three children, Cush, Sharon and Veronica, four grandchildren, Joshua, Hakeem, Micah, Natalia, the Gibbons family, Gib Alan Gibbons family here in Montserrat, her Church of God of Prophecy family, many other relatives and friends in the UK and in Montserrat. May Mary Gibbons, Ma Mary Christiana Gibbons Douglas' soul rest in peace and rise again in glory. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God as we reflect upon the life of our dearly beloved sister. At this time, we're going to have the hymn just a little while to stay here. At this time as well, we will take Okay, we just have the hymn at this time.
praise the Lord. Praise God. We sing to the honor and glory of the Lord. Soon this life will all be over. And the pilgrimage will end. Soon we'll take a heavenly journey. Be at home again with friends. Heaven's gates are standing open. Waiting for our way. 
Hallelujah. Just a little while. Hallelujah. To stay here. And then we'll enter heaven's portal. Sweeping through the pearly gates. What a wonderful time it will be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time we'll continue with the reflections on the life of our dearly beloved sister. And this time we'll have three video presentations. Uh, first would be from Sister Mary Weeks. Memories of Sister Mary Douglas. I first met Sister Mary Douglas at the Church of God of Prophecy in Montserrat. Memories of Sister Mary Douglas. I first met Sister Mary Douglas at the Church of God of Prophecy in Montserrat, my home church, whilst on vacation in either 2013 or 2014. She was prayed for during the service as she would shortly travel back to London. After the service, I went over and introduced myself to her and we chatted a while as she awaited her transport home. Brother Weeks and I visited her before she traveled and we got to know her a little better. She asked us where we worshipped in London and said she would love to come and visit with us. On returning to London, we contacted her and chatted regularly. One Sunday, she called saying she came to church, but no one was there as she turned up extremely early for our worship service, which usually started at 1 p.m. So she had to return home. The next Sunday, she came to church at the correct time and was there as often as she could possibly be due to her health. The church members grew to love her and many were drawn to her like a magnet and some lasting relationships were formed. Sister Mary was really a lovable person, one who never complained even though one could see she was in some discomfort or pain. Her response was that in everything, she will continue to trust God. When asked how she was feeling, she often replied, the pains and aches are there, but I'm learning to trust God for my healing and can't give up on him now. I have come too far leaning on him to give up now. The doctors can only do so much, so I'm continuing to trust him. When Brother Weeks and I visited her at home, you would not believe the preparation she made for our visit, as we would alert her days in advance of our intentions to visit. We didn't want to turn up unannounced, just in case she wasn't feeling well or not having a really good day in general. Our visits were always enjoyable, as we chatted and prayed together. If she didn't hear from us for a bit, she would call and find out if we are good. On returning to Montserrat after a short holiday in London, we were able to accompany her in her travels over to Montserrat and we visited her often during her stay. Our visits were very special and again, there was always some life lessons to learn from our discussions. She also always had something to share with us from her garden. Although we were unable to meet since she returned to London in 2019 for medical attention, we communicated on a regular basis. We realized her health was failing and often she mentioned her wish to travel back to Montserrat. She might not have gotten this wish in life, but we are happy to know that she will be laid to rest there. May her soul rest in eternal peace, for we know she is in a better place. Sunday school class. On behalf of the Dunstan Haggerston New Life Assembly pastoral care team and the adult Sunday tribute to Sister Mary Douglas from the pastoral care team and the adult Sunday school class. On behalf of the Dunstan Haggerston New Life Assembly pastoral care team and the adult Sunday school class. We wish to pay tribute to Sister Mary Douglas. Sister Mary regularly attended Sunday school and was always willing to participate in the class and was very knowledgeable of the scriptures. She was a very pleasant person who communicated very well with the brethren and was much loved. 
on occasions when she was unable to attend Sunday school and church due to ill health, the pastoral care team would call or visit her at home and minister to her. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic situation and restrictions, the pastoral care team were only able to get in touch with her by phone, which we regularly did, and prayed with her and also for her family. Sister Mary was a blessing to the fellowship and will be greatly missed by all at the Dalston Haggerston New Life Assembly. The following words are taken from Revelation 14, 13. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors. May her soul rest in peace. Our deepest condolences to all the family. May you be comforted by God or Father as you mourn your loved one. Lucinda Hogan, Minister.
The Prophecy Women of Excellence joins with family and friends to celebrate the life of our dearly departed Sister Mary. Although Sister Mary lived in England, she was very much a part of the Prophecy Women of Excellence. Whenever she comes home, she faithfully attended every meeting and willingly participated in all of the activities in our group. Sister Mary loved to share her testimony of the goodness of God in her life, as well as sing of the greatness of Jehovah. What a mighty God we serve. Can you remember her singing that? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. She enjoyed singing praises to Almighty God. Although we are saddened by her passing, the fact that she testifies of accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord, Savior, and King brings a calmness and assurance that she has gone to a better place where sickness and death can never touch her body ever again. Sister Mary expressed her desire and that desire was for her entire family to be saved. She wants her entire family to be saved. Therefore, in the true spirit of missions, we encourage all family members and friends to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. To the family, as you grieve, cherish those very special and precious memories, for they will cause you to smile or even burst into laughter. Sister Mary had a beautiful smile. Look at the program, look through it and you will see. Sitting right there, right where Sister Lam, Loretta is sitting, and you see the most beautiful smile ever. May her soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We're going to sing one of our theme songs. Jesus says, we have heard the joyful sound.
Jesus saves. The only one that saves. Hallelujah. It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, we'll have uh, Miss Veronica, Veronica Douglas to come and do a reflection, followed by the fishes of men. And then we'll have the Honorable Charles Conant. Thank you all for coming today. The family and I are truly touched by the words of condolence, appreciation, acts of kindness and expressions of love that we have received. And you have shown for my mother, Mary Christiana Douglas Gibbons, a.k.a. Mon Thompson of Baker Hill. Ma would often tell us stories of her childhood in Montserrat how she could enter any nearby household and receive a warm reception. And even though she was an only child, she had an assortment of brothers and sisters. We heard about Aunt Mama and Uncle Harry, the old house by the water tank, Christy and Aunt Bet. We heard about her grandma Bella, her grandpa Dickie Man. She painted such a picture that my younger self wondered why she would leave such an idyllic place, but leave she did boarded a boat at the age of 16 and made a life for herself in England where she raised us. It took me many, many years to realize my ma was actually a superhero. She was extraordinary in the way that ordinary people can be, constantly striving to achieve a better life for herself and us. She, like most mothers, was a master of plate spinning, providing love, essentials, and the odd luxury as best she could. I'd like to think that we appreciated it as much as children ever appreciate their parents' sacrifices. So not enough. You will all have your own perception of who my mother was and what she was about. Someone recently described her to me as both humble and flamboyant. I wasn't sure, but on reflection, it's a perfect description. She rarely wanted to be the center of attention, but would rock a hat or outfit that said, Notice me, but don't make a big deal about it. Ma had taste. Taste in clothes, taste in food. Her cooking abilities were outstanding. A personal favorite for me being saltfish, and I don't even like saltfish. Yes, she was that good. My mother returned to her faith in her 40s, and it put a light inside her. Her faith was not based on judgment, criticism, or shaming. She was understanding of mistakes and so incredibly easy to talk to that you felt as though you had spent time with the oracle. Every mistake or problem was an opportunity to learn, grow, and be closer to God. To my mind, she became a calmer, wiser, and more open person. By the end, her benign inner strength filled me with awe and I have nothing but respect and gratitude for what she was able to achieve in her life. A natural creative, a seamstress, a plants woman, a sweet, kind, and generous soul who will be missed by all. My respects to you, Ma. I am so glad that we got to close the circle. I love you and will always miss you forever. Be at peace.
and extended family. Sister Mary was a wonderful person, a wonderful mother, a wonderful friend. And I would normally, I get to know Sister Mary some years ago, maybe about 10 years ago or so, from Sister Geraldine Allen in Manja. And I would normally take, pick her up and bring her to church. And when we are coming for the first three days of every month, for five o'clock prayer meeting, she would say, I was a deacon then, she would say, Deacon Juke, don't forget to pick me up at 4.30 tomorrow morning for prayer meeting. So I would pick her up, and by the time I get there, she's already ready with her flashlight coming down. I trust that the song that we're about to sing would bring you some measure of comfort, and that you'll continue to reflect on the things that she did, and be encouraged to follow in that path. We are doing the song, What a Day That Will Be.
morning church. I expect to pass this world once. Any good therefore that I can do or any kindness that I can show to my fellow creature. Let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect, for I shall not pass this way again. Mary Mon Gibbons. First time here about Christiana just now. <laughs> A.K.A. Mon Thompson. Lived a full life and enjoyed her life. She worked hard, as we have heard, and she was a stickler for details. She was a fun person and enjoyed a good laugh and had a great sense of humor. I remember too well on her visits in the early life when she started coming back, when Nepco then was still in swing. And sometimes a bunch of us would end up at Nepco then. For those, some of you don't know, used to be in Cockle weeks, is. the old man made rotis. Dancing, lots of jokes, and having a good time. And she came at Christmas time. She was sure to enjoy the masquerades. She enjoyed that, and the string bands, and the parades, and the pageantry. Mary was of a pleasant demeanor. She had a very good spirit, but was a no nonsense person. I would be quick to point out and correct you, losing the smile only for a while. I can recall when she came and, as we heard, as she and Geraldine, and sadly Geraldine passed some weeks after her. I happened to be in England at the time, so. Her having visited Geraldine and everything, when I got back here, the call to say that she had died. Now on Sundays after church here, Mary, would either, they would either go to Geraldine, or by her, or by Nadine, for lunch. I've heard, you know, every now and then when I feel I'm not cooking and Geraldine is here, I would pop in for my lunch too. So many a times we end up there with that treat. Never reach Nadine. I didn't know about the Nadine connection at the time. But that's who she was, and the shade and shade alike. And there was always that joy for her just to come to church and just to be, for being here. She was into a family, and on her arrival on island, would be sure to contact her relatives. I can still hear her if I ask if you wanted to go anyway. Oh, Cousin James, or Cousin Morris will pick me up. <laughs> she was always, especially James, James was always there, her chauffeur. She was kind and took pleasure in sharing what she had as she would send home these barrels. And sure enough, some of the stuff would be to give relatives and friends. And sure enough, I would get a bottle of coffee, among other things. But she knew I liked coffee, so that bottle. So whoever is continuing the tradition, I still want my coffee. <laughs> she was always neatly and elegantly dressed. Even when she was going down, just down to Kajahed, or even to the beach. She was always a very elegant person. Mary was a Christian in word and deed. I was never ashamed of telling others of her love for God and the many situations God had brought us through. Truly, she loved the Lord. Mary, you are gone. And you will be missed. But your memories will live on. With all those whose lives you've touched. Sweet be your rest. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the hymn Up from the Grave Heroes as we take up our offering as well.
from the grave he arose praise the name of the Lord now one of these days we hope to meet our sister again hallelujah praise God Lord in the grave he lay Jesus my Savior wait in the coming day Jesus my He rose and at this time we'll have the Salem worship team to come and bless our hearts. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. 
Invite our pastor, Bishop Dr. Melroy Mead, who will come and do our homily at this time. Thank you very much, our Minister Patterson. I believe that somebody owe the Lord of praise in here. If Sister Mary was here, she would have been standing and giving God a praise. So just lift your hands with me for one moment. I can find her. She's somewhere. just to make a, a confession here this morning. I don't sit in the seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but based on Sister Mary's lifestyle, based on the way she lived, I have good reason this morning to believe that she's somewhere around God's throne. I would have preferred not to be speaking at this time. That's based on our relationship. But if I did not, she would not be happy either. Would she have been coming here in person? She knew, she, she knew very well that, that I'm very particular about what I eat. And so she'll have my package of nuts and some other dainties to go with it. And I wouldn't say like Minister Kernan that um, whoever else is, but I suppose the understanding is there. But putting all things equal, she was a very gracious person. And um, how should I say? The Lord is a good God. And uh, the last time we had any communication, she says, I'm planning to come back home. See you soon, Pastor. Never anticipated this might have been the circumstance. But I'm reminded of a scripture in the book of St. John's. I'm pretty sure that a lot of us would have been mindful of it time after time. Where the word of God says, let not your hearts be troubled. We live in a time and season with so many things that's confronting our world. It's a season it seems of false prophets. It's a time when we are going through the present pandemic crisis which has created so much fear, confusion, and even anxiety. The unexpected situations which our governments are facing, the issues of climate change and its impact on our world, disaster after disasters. And these have left our nations puzzled, still searching for solutions. Jesus being mindful of this time and of this season wanted us to believe and to trust him. And so I want to say to somebody today, and that is, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus declared that in his father's house are many mansions. Amen. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I want us to understand today that while we live in a world that's filled with troubles, concerns, and cares, that our surroundings seemingly has created fear on top of fear. Folks 
babies are dying so often of heart attack. Strokes. And on and on the list goes. But I'm glad today to report that Jesus sounds a word of comfort. He says with all that is going on around us, let not your hearts be troubled. Says ye who believe in God and those who will, he says you need to trust me. Oh hallelujah. For placing one's trust in God will bring you out more than conqueror. David knew this when he said mm, that God is our refuge. God is our strength. And God is our very present help in the time of trouble. May I remind somebody that troubles don't last forever. And this situation of our pain, of our circumstance, it won't last forever. I've come by to remind our family here that the God of heaven in whom our sister trusted, that she wants you to understand that her heart is with God and that her spirit is in a place where she knows no pain, she knows no agony, but she understands understands what it means uh, to have kept her faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in my father's house how many mansions uh, one writer says in my father's house uh, are many rooms uh, let me tell you today she's occupying one of those rooms at this moment uh, and I tell you something that room is certainly decorated to appreciate uh, the quality and the lifestyle of our dear sister in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but thank God but I'm glad for Jesus Christ because when he makes a promise he stands by his promise you can you can bet on the Lord Jesus Christ whatever he says he's able to perform in my father's house are many mansions well somebody in here need to give God thanks that you've got a mansion can I talk to somebody in here one writer says, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Oh, hallelujah. In that bright land where we'll never go. And so loyal. And someday yonder. Hallelujah. We'll never more wonder. But we'll walk on streets that are pure made, sorry, with purest gold. I'm going to prepare a home for you. Well, somebody needs to be reminded that construction is going on pretty well. But he's coming back. Are you hearing? I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'll come again. Just tap your neighbor, give them an elbow, because you've got to be careful. Tell them, I've got a mansion. And you better believe it, I've got a mansion. Just over the hilltop. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I, I thank God that that mansion is right there for whosoever will. Oh, hallelujah. That's why Jesus quoted and he sounded the word that everybody could understand that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Having accepted Jesus gives you a license to own a certificate. On the other side, 
Hallelujah. I need you to, to note one more thing, and that is John the Revelator. In Revelations 21 and verse 3, John wrote and he said, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. What I want to outline today is that having created that real estate where there's a home somewhere, he says, you're not going to be there lonely. Somebody didn't hear me. That mansion won't, won't be occupied by you alone. Down here, we build mansions. Sometimes we are left alone in a children gone. And they won't come back except to visit and take off. And then you alone is left. Three, four, five bedroom house. Struggling to clean it. And to maintain it. And to keep things going. And sometimes we struggle to even pay the bill that Monlet would send us. But I've got news for you today. And that is that mansion over on the other side. That none of us would be there by ourselves. We won't have to worry about servants and to get somebody to come by and to look after us for a moment. And sometimes when they take care of you, they give you all kinds of words, although you're paying them. But thank God today that over on the other side, that my mansion won't need a caretaker. For Jesus declared, I will dwell with them. In other words, I've got good company. And my company is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Angels aren't good enough because Jesus says, I would be with them and I will dwell with them. I'm so glad. I've got him to dwell with me. I'm, I'm coming close to the end. And they shall be his people. Did you hear that? So in other words, are you are no stranger. Talk to me, somebody. Do you know you can be a stranger in your own place? <laughs> but thank God. Hey. We won't be strangers up there. He'll dwell with us. And we shall be his people. And God himself. Did you hear me? And God himself. Not a stranger. But God himself, Sister White. Shall be with them. And he will be their God. Secondly. Not only shall he be with us. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in the same Revelations 21. You see the fact that he promised to be with us. He then says on God. Not your neighbor or some friend of yours. But God himself. Did you hear me? He'll be so close to you. That just in case you're tempted to shed a tear, the Bible says, and God himself shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. I'm so glad, church, that we've got a good man, a good savior, a good father who will stand by you and wipe away all your tears. Oh, hallelujah. That's why one writer got happy and sang, hallelujah, the tears will never stain the streets of that city. No hallelujah, no wreath of death on my mansion's door. Teardrops aren't welcome.
welcome beyond the gates of glory and my heart I say in our hearts your heart sister Veronica your heart but the cush will never break again oh hallelujah every now and again every now and again something calls our hearts to break but I'm looking forward for that day when God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Number two, in that city, there'll be no more death. Oh, hallelujah. There'll be no more funeral plans. There'll be no need for Brother Lindsay at the back. There'll be no need for any undertaker because we all would have become overtakers. Oh, hallelujah. And so today, some Somebody need to raise their abilities because I won't have to worry anymore. No more death, my neighbor. Today we won't have to worry about program planning and somebody to organize any funeral service. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward for my last hallelujah funeral program because I'll pack it up hallelujah and I've got my wings anybody here understand what I'm saying and I were gonna sing like the writer I'm gonna take an airplane ride hallelujah and I won't come back in this world again but I'm coming back to a new world to a new earth to a new heaven oh hallelujah where we all mm, have a grand time. Oh Lord, I thought somebody would give me an amen in here. Amen. Did you hear me somebody? Oh Lord, I know it's time for us to leave, but I feel like getting happy in here today. Hallelujah. I pray somebody will stand with me in this house. I feel like giving God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, God, somebody get some praise on. Hallelujah. Once you're not sick and you can stand, get those mics in your hand. And I feel like shouting for a moment. We shall have a grand time. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, somebody? We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time. Did you hear me? We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Walking with the angels. Singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Somebody say. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Whoa. Walking with the angel, oh, yeah, yeah. singing hallelujah. Yeah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. We shall have a grand time, time. Yeah. 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 up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Whoa. Walking with the angel, yeah, yeah, yeah. singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time. Oh, up in heaven. Somebody just give me a shout. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're walking with the angels. Singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. One more time. Oh, we shall have a grand time. Up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Yeah. Walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Oh, we shall have a grand time up in heaven. Yeah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Yeah. Walking with the angels, singing hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. We shall have a grand time up in heaven, have a grand time. Lord, 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 
I, st I felt somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As frail as Sister Mary would have been, she would have been helped even by somebody just to float that skirt around. But we're going to have a grand time. Praise God. I think I'm going to conclude this here. But I want you to know something. The mansion. No crying. No pain. No loneliness. The construction is so good that I'm told it's going to be streets of gold. And those streets of gold appear like glass. And I said, my goodness. God has to have the best understanding of, of jewelry or, 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 or of minerals. Yes, sir. Streets of gold. And then, of course, she's going to receive a crown that fadeth not away. And then we're going to wing, wing ourselves back here to enjoy a new earth and a new heaven. Bow your heads with me at this moment. As we bow our heads prayerfully, I'm going to invite um, Pastor Webb, Bishop Webb, to come and to pray for you. And then we're going to make our way to the cemetery. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Great is thy faithfulness, O God. There is no shadow of turning with thee, thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not, and as thou hast been, thou forever will be. We thank you for this precious moment, dear God, as we celebrate, dear God, the home going of our dear sister. And we pray, dear God, that the family, dear God, would be strengthened, dear God, today. But whatever had been said, dear God, and to remind them, dear God, that they also could have a mansion in heaven. Oh God, I pray for your Holy Spirit, dear God, to cover them and strengthen them during this time of bereavement. I ask, dear God, for your guidance, your direction, and your protection over their lives, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for each and every one that is here. Oh God, we ask, dear God, that you will go with us. Oh God, we ask that you will envelop us with your presence dear God we thank you dear God for everything we thank you for the word which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway bless dear God the family and the friends and the church brethren and everyone to your glory and to your honor in Jesus mighty name amen bless thank you very much we're going to make our way to the cemetery as we sing or recessional hymn and that is will your anchor holds and uh, when we get to the third verse we'll make our way or on the other the last verse we'll make our way on the outside or towards the cemetery please praise God
maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs, runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and shall gather the lamb with his hands, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead them that they are with young. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal should have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For as much as it pleased God, Almighty God, in his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister, Mary Christina Douglas Gibbons, here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection the, to the eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, when the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the spiritual bodies of those who sleep in him shall be made like unto the glorified body of our Lord, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Let us pray. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to remove from this world the soul of our dear sister Mary Douglas Gibbons, we lay her body here to rest a little while, then to be buried in the ground. Then shall dust return to dust as it was by the Spirit at return, but the Spirit to return to God gifted. Our Father and God, we honor you today. We thank you, dear God, as we place the remains of Sister Mary's body in the ground. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the years that you have lent her to us. We thank you, Lord, for the many adventures, the many challenges that you went through, that you were able to stand by your side. We thank you, dear God, as she has returned to you. Lord, we are comforted to know that she did your bidding, 
and we take comfort to know God that she's in a better place. No more sorrow, no more pains, no more aches, no more hospitalization. We pray, dear God, that you would continue, Lord, to let your mercies rest on us. Remember our children, most of all, our grandchildren, our relatives, our siblings, those, God, that are near. We pray, God, that you grant comfort, you strengthen them as they continue to mourn her passing. Even now, Lord, we ask you to take honor and take glory. In Jesus' name we ask. We will be guided by our program and we will sing the song we are marching to Zion.
do we'll do the last song and then we'll close out. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do the song. Will your anchor hold? Uh, can we have the family members to come quickly? Say with a prayer for the for the for the family at this time. And following that, I'm gonna ask Pastor to do the Bless them in the good times and in the bad times. Yes, Father, oh God, there are times when we are but we have an anchor yes. in you, oh God, who yes. is able to keep us safe. Yes. 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 In a place, oh God, where we know, oh God, that you will take care of us, oh God, until we meet again. In this name I pray. We have Pastor Tony to, to just do the benediction. And um, on your way home, you can stop on by the um, school, by the school up here, the um, primary school and auditorium 
and you can pick up a package on your way, please. Thank you. Pastor Tony. Shall we repeat the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. the love of God, yes. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless all of you. Let me ask you. Excuse me, Miss. Excuse me. Push. <laughs> 